nice and together. So let's have a look at the head. I've already traced it out. So in tracing it out, I made sure I had the lines or the texture um, going across the head rather than down the head. So getting our glass cutter, and I always like to clean my cutter before I start. So in here, I've just got a little dab of oil and some um, uh, paper paper serviette in there to hold the oil, good machine oil, give it a nice clean. That's the only time I ever use oil. And then we can cut away. So remembering we press down at the end there, oops, press down on the end there and follow the line across. And that this is a bumpy piece of glass, so there will be wonky doodles and not quite as round as I probably want it. I'm cutting on the inside of the uh, black line because I'm cutting the grout line off. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do this in one clean sweep around, but I'll give it a whirl. Oops. So I'll get halfway through and then I'll hold the cutter really, really steadily on the glass. Not wanting to move its little spot at all because you should never double run a score line and then cut it all the way around. And we'll see how we go. Once I hit the other score line, whoops, it just slid over that, so we'll have a wonky bit to deal with. And see how this all works. I'll use these wonderful little running pliers to get it off, remembering that the line goes on the score line. And that means the little breaker button will be on the bottom of the school line. And it just falls off. This one here will be a little more challenging because it's all the way around. And also this bit here is very tiny. I may need to get the grazers off for that because it is such a tiny piece. And it's not happy with it, but we'll move it around and see what happens. It's really trial and error. Oh yes, there we got a bit broken off. Aiming for a nice smooth finish. This is glass is quite a toughie. Come back here and give it another squeeze. Oh, break it all out. So that's pretty good. Very happy with that. So we have a reasonably shaped. Oh, we lost a bit here, but. Because it's done that, we can um, just change the shape of, of, the, of the head. It's flexible. We're doing our B, we're doing what we want. So I'm just going to nip that one off and make it a little rounder there. See, all sorts of things can happen, add to your creative design process. So here I'm going to nip this one in about as much as that bit broke off. It might be that I didn't start that corner properly or have enough pressure because I'm trying to, as you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a heavy hand when it comes to my um, glass cutter. I'm trying to be not quite so heavy. And I've been trying to do that for a long time. So we have a rough, a rough shape here. If I had to be precise, I probably would want to recut that. But for mosaicing purposes, we sure don't need to do that at all. So I might nip that little pointy bit on the top there so it doesn't look like a Martian. And then we get our, do our safety measure, wet sanding pad or a grinder if you're a grinder, if you've got a grinder or access to a grinder. Just to get those sharp bits off so you don't have to... Um, Worry too much about cutting yourself, but still be careful. There's a little lumpy bit there, I'm going to get that one off. And under here is a sharp little bit. So all done. So this is going to impact the shape of my wings as well. So we need to sort of think about, okay, how do we do that? This is where we go to constructing and fitting our pieces 
So, uh, and we just adjust as we go and we can do that easily with a mosaic item. Bring back our little cartoon here. And we know we have to recut this bit. Not by much as a matter of fact. Only by a little bit. So if I take these nips off the end here, I'm going to have a perfect fit for my um, bee head. So I thought it was going to be much more than that, but as it turns out, it's going to be the wings that will need some special attention. And it's like with any glass tile that we um, want to make. So here, the wings are going to be coming, um, following this line through here. So I will be wanting to put, I want to get rid of this line that I, I pre-made, because it's not going to work. All a part of the let's get it happening session. I might use a different colour pen. Let's go for a nice red. So then I'll just overlay, and I also want these wings to be more down so they it looks very different to the other bee. So I might put sit this here, overlay it with the head a bit, thinking about from here. I'm going to do it from here, and I'm going to draw this line all the way through here and we may need a couple of goes at this one and we'll do the same for this little guy over here we can see through these clear wings if you didn't have um, a see-through panel you might want to uh, consider how you're going to um, see your pattern to to guess where you want to cut it you might want to lay it on the top for instance so this one i just need to cut this bit out see how we go i'll just use wheel nippers for that if it was a bit bigger i would probably use my glass cutter going gently with this um really gorgeous glass because you don't want to be um throwing that away it's very easy to be um, not concerned about clear glass like this because it's so cheap but once you start using good quality expensive glasses you want to be very go very carefully so let's see how we went here oh, excellent I think that's pretty good and I think I would just take this little corner off here just to give it a better shape so very tiny so by that I mean just take a little bit off the corner and that's enough and that just improves the shape like a thousand percent see that little actions great results so let's see how we go with this little guy here is going to be a little more challenging there's always one textured glass using wheel nippers the cut is going to be a little more unpredictable and that's just the nature of the glass so don't feel don't feel that it's um, all about you um, it's just how the glass is so let's see how we've got it here so we're looking at the fit and when you talk about fit is where does it bump the other piece of glass and how much do you need to change the shape so if I wanted to be really fussy I take these little bits off and so I'm going to do that I'm going to be really fussy I'm taking just that corner off the inside and the corner off the other one just a weeny bit just to improve the fit which it's done no, I'm not still not quite happy with that so you do it until you are happy with it I want I do want this wing to be down a bit like the other one so I'm going to um, have another go at 
this little guy here is just not wanting to cut properly. Here's my black pen. So let's get him. This is where a grinder would be awesome. So if you have a grinder, that's what you would be wanting to use that for, definitely, just to fine tune that shape. Okay, so this should be pretty good. A bit more off the bottom bit. And this is where you need to be patient. If you love shaping glass, it's good fun. Excellent. And of course the last bit is his eyes. So I've got one of these beads I showed you the other day. We call them gems. And it's an iridized black gem, which is perfect for eyes. So I'll chop that in half with my wheel nippers. So remember, nip. If you do the slow crunch on these, you'll end up with burrs potentially through here that you'll need to, to cut off. So always think nip and a really quick one. You get a really great clean cut then. Oh, it must be the best cut I've done for ages. But I'm not going to put it this way like flat bottom, I'm going to turn it on its side and have the top part of the, or the straightest bit, which, which would have been the bottom, facing the head. It just gives the eye a nice shape on the sides and have the little beady eyes over on the side. So there we have our bee all ready to, to, to glue with slightly different wings. I still might bend these wings down a bit. So it's more uh, more of a drape. Anyway, before our next session, which will be only about gluing it onto the mosaic. So we can see how it fits with our, uh, oops, our topic um, on doing, oops, we've got a wobbly bit here. Just bear with me. Oh, we are on the wobble. Um, our topic is about incorporating stained glass into our mosaics and how much fun is that. So I've already done B number one, so we can see how it's going to work. Um, and then we'll look at how do we place B number two onto our uh, mosaic and glue it in the place we want. I've got a rough outline of where I think I might want it to be but I won't know until I pop it on and see how it all looks together. And I'm using gorgeous blue flowers that sort of uh, salvia like, uh, perhaps it's a new species of salvia, because uh, Australian blue banded bees do have, while well, they love all flowers, they do particularly like anything that's blue or purple or within those tones, which is really nice for us because it looks fabulous in a mosaic with them. Okay, so then we're ready to do the last session, which hopefully I'll get to tomorrow, uh, should the uh, weather be as great as it is today, which is a fabulous uh, ooh, 9 degrees on my veranda or 58 degrees Fahrenheit for those who work in Fahrenheit. Um, and um, hopefully get all the gluing done and see how I'm going to use three, three colours. So here I'm going to use, I'll use the same colour I'm using for these guys, which is the brown sandy colour. Uh, white on these lovely blue stripes and black to make my fake black glass. As you can see, it works super well. Here's my fake black glass. This is what we're going to make. So pretty good. Don't need to worry too much about that at all shaping up really well for the I Love Bees collection. That's pretty much it. I hope I didn't bore you too much and that you'll be able to go away now and cut your bee, get it to the shape that you want all ready to glue and make this fake black glass and use different coloured glues tomorrow. Thank you.